when you have people dying in your arms, it puts a burning desire in your heart to try to keep it from happening again. Born of the compassion and confidence of the military medical corps on the front lines, and a need for clinicians to serve on the home front, over the last half century, physician assistants have offered comfort, care, and hope from world wars to the war on poverty. And in the words of Jennifer Jones, Our PA provides so much more than medical care. She offers them their dignity, and they love her for it. The PA profession has its roots deep in the heart of American medicine in a rural general practice in North Carolina. There, in 1940, Dr. Amos Johnson trains his employee, Henry Buddy Treadwell, to be his doctor's assistant. They work shoulder to shoulder to provide care to those in need. As medicine evolves in the 40s and 50s, the demand for physicians grows so fast the supply can't keep up. But by the 1960s, a solution comes marching home. Highly skilled medics and corpsmen returning from war looking for work. Dr. Charles Hudson sees the possibility to take them from outside the wire to inside America's doctor's offices. But it's Dr. Eugene A. Stead, Jr. at Duke University who transforms Hudson's vision into reality. In 1964, Dr. Stead coins the phrase physician assistant. And the next year, he develops the first formal PA program at Duke. It's based on the fast-track medical training he developed during World War II, and a handful of former Navy corpsmen are the first students. Among them is Ken Farrell. In the words of Ken Farrell, working up a patient in a hospital was probably easier for us than it was for the medical students because we'd already seen so many patients in the military. In 1966, a Look Magazine article catapults the PA concept into the national spotlight. The following year, Dr. E. Harvey Estes takes the reins of Duke's PA program, and on his watch, the first class graduates on October 6, 1967. With thousands of corpsmen returning each year, many more graduates will follow in their footsteps. To quote Rear Admiral Michael Milner, I still feel the connection to those first PAs and the combat medics and corpsmen of the Vietnam era. They made a mark on me, and I silently thank them every day for helping me become a PA. From 1968 to 1972, Estes holds a series of groundbreaking conferences that solidify the future of the PA profession. And the American Academy of Physician Assistants is officially registered. In the coming years, PA programs spring up across the country, including Dr. Richard Smith's MedEx Medical Extension in Seattle. MedEx trains and deploys former corpsmen to rural primary care practices throughout the Northwest. Gino Gianola was one of the early MedEx PAs. As he remembers it, Dr. Smith knew what corpsmen and MedEx could do and thought the PA profession was a very good use of that experience. In the coming years, as PA programs spread, organizations form to set standards, assure competency, and provide certifications for physician assistants. In 1987, National PA Day is established on October 6th, the 20th anniversary of the first graduating class of PAs from Duke, and also the birthday of Dr. Eugene Stead. Over the years, the PA career has grown by leaps and bounds. Today, PAs can prescribe medication in all 50 states, and they've served in state and national legislatures and visited the White House to speak on health care reform. In the words of Rachel Stark Farrell, Once I became a PA, my life changed. The fact that I had a skill and something that I could pay forward, give back, it never crossed my mind to not be of service. The story of how PAs came to be is one of the great tales of innovation in American medicine. It's a bold experiment that continues to yield new results. 
But one thing remains the same. PAs still reach out to people in need of care across America and around the world. Finding joy in serving others.